Welcome back. Hey, look, we're playing some relay chess on a console. Um, but no, really what I'm trying to do is uh, fix move generation and check detection and so forth and actually implement relay chess in Stockfish. Since there's been so much demand for it, and since there's actually a site where they're implementing the variant, um, getting some help now testing this sort of thing. Um, and we're seeing that it's broken all over the place. And so uh, I devised my own test. Uh, test involves setting up this particular position with a king here, a king there, a rook here, um, and just verifying that the move generation is correct. So what should be generated is the rook to all of these squares, the king to all these squares laterally, the king to these squares vertically, except a8 and a7, which are under control of the opposing king, um, and the rook moving to b2 to check the black king. All of those should be generated, and not all of those are generated. Um, so I'm starting there. Um, yes, it is true that the other day I did have a different move generator. Uh, however, I think I found a way to optimize this, but I broke it in the process. So I'm starting with this, trying to figure out what have I done wrong. Um, so first I start by seeing like what pieces are defending the piece that we're trying to move. Um, oh, I think this is my first bug where I'm saying and target. Um, let's see, what's the ordinary move generation do? Oh, the ordinary move generation uses this and target, so that shouldn't be the issue. Um, so I would expect that this would aid uh, our king in movement, and apparently it did not. Um, so this prints out what are our attackers to the king, where the king is the piece that we're attempting to move, and which attackers are our pieces of those that are attacking the king. So we're actually checking what's defending our king. Um, am I missing something? Is it possible that we just use a different move generator for the king? And maybe that's the whole deal, is that I'm not calling this method in the first place. That's probably it. Um, let me take a look before I jump the gun too much. Um, so we got a move generator here. Yeah, we say generate moves for type. Um, position, move list, and target. Oh, that's for pawn moves. Those can stay as they are. Um, then we got generate castling. Uh, but where do we say generate king moves? Uh, this is the normal move generation algorithm. Not quiet checks if not evasions. King square equals the square of our king. Uh, attacks from our king and the target. This is where things would need to be different for relay chess because um, kings move differently. While B. So. Oh, I see. All right. So it would be actually right here that I would insert some code for relay chess. Um, something to the tune of what we already do down here, which is okay if I have to duplicate a little bit of code. It's not pretty, but um, let's see, lines 325 through 336, so that's actually 12 lines of code, and we're going to drop that right in here. Um, I think that's what we need to do. Obviously we don't need to check, uh, as I just removed these couple lines, we don't need to check if the king is defended by a king, and if so, give the king king powers, because it is a king. Um, 
so it would be redundant. That would be redundantly redundant. Um, so I think that's better. Um, we're going to attempt to recompile. If I still have my compile command in my buffer, there it is. Um, oh, I goofed up. Line 384, it does not define the variable from. Um, here, from is actually called king square. So, here we're a bit more precise in our terminology. Um, there we go. And do a rebuild. Us is not declared. Of course it's not. Um, oh, it's capital us on this line of code. In the other method, it's lowercase us. Uh, to, to define which pieces on the board actually belong to the player on move. All right, so now, now we attempt our test again, which sets up this position, and our legal moves are b1, c1, d1, e1, f1, g1, and h1 for the rook, b2 for the rook, um, b1 for the king, b2 for the king, c2, d2, e2, f2, g2, h2 for the king, a3, B3, okay, yeah, that makes sense. A4, A5, A6. So move generation is exactly as it should be in this position. Um, all the legal moves are detected, all eight rook moves, the seven lateral ones, and uh, the diagonal rook move of a single square are all generated. Um, all these local squares for the king are generated, all four of those, plus these six to the right and plus these three to the north or should i say six to the east and three to the north beyond the local square there so all the legal moves are in fact generated there which is cool um, so the next logical test is uh, reverse the colors put black to move and stick black's king in the corner and see if black necessarily steps out of the check that he's in um, so we consider this position to be check because white's rook defends white's king and white's king is checking the black king uh threatening king takes king um so that's how relay chess works is that if you have a piece that's defending another piece that defended piece inherits the powers of the piece that's doing the defending uh, so the rook i probably didn't explain this very well earlier but anyway um if you have questions feel free to ask um, so here generates three moves for black, king a7, king b7, and king b8. And um, apparently it says after each of these moves, white has 21, 20, and 21 moves respectively. So I guess it's not noticing the fact that king a7 is illegal. How far in the search do I have to go before it detects that there's a problem? Okay. Cool. So if I extend the search one more move to one and a half moves deep, or three plies deep, um, it says, hey dude, uh, you captured the king. That's not supposed to happen. Hey, Mr. Corrupted. Yeah, I saw your messages on Discord. Um, it's unfortunate that changing that attacks to and attacks from didn't quite work out. Um, I'm actually just going to approach things my own way with this and see, um, instead of changing the fundamental definitions of how some of those functions work, I'm gonna change what consumes them and see how far I get. It might be a mess, hopefully it's not. Um, so, yeah, here, um, it dawned on me this morning that I could use the perfed command, uh, which is used for performance te uh, testing as well as for validating the legal move counts, um, just to make sure that we're getting the right moves generated. It didn't occur to me yesterday that this was possible. Um, and so here's my test position that I'm starting with um, that just really limits the scope of white and black's legal moves. Um, so to go back a little bit, um, 
In this position, it says black's moves are king a7, king b7, and king b8. Obviously that's wrong. Obviously king a7 is illegal because the rook defends the king and the king attacks everything on the file. Um, so this is a good test position. So I'm going to go into the code and figure out... Oh, also it does not identify checkers here correctly. So first I've got to fix the tester. Um, so we're going to look at position.cpp. Um, it's got a method position is okay. And somewhere in here we define where's our checks. Uh, where to go? Where to go? Um, check. Check. has got to be defined here somewhere. Checkers BB. Rip. There you are. Checkers B. Okay. So this is where it's defined. Um, let's see. That's sufficiently, or that's few enough things that that gives me uh, some confidence I can just manually figure this out. It's for atomic, if not, do all this stuff. I see now. Um, I hadn't actually given the a JavaScript AI a, a try. I did uh, previously attempt, um, like you showed me that one position where it failed. I took that FEN string and used that to test um, whether or not the program would crash. Or I'm sorry, first of all, to test whether or not that night takes night move was illegal and fix the move generator that way. And so I tried it in that sense that I got the move generator to stop making some ridiculous moves. Um, I have not tried it in JavaScript form, but here from the console, I can just type go infinite. Um, um, I guess I will say the other day I did limit it to one ply depth, and trying to checkmate the damn thing was really tricky. Um, it took me a good like 40 moves or something to be able to actually perform a checkmate, just because the king would dance back and forth on the back rank, and it took me forever to figure out how to sever. Actually, I didn't manage to sever the king and the rook. Actually, there are two rooks, but I managed to control all six squares on the back rank. Um, and that's how I won that. But that was just against an engine that's looking one half move deep. Um, so I imagine that once I finally get this working, it's going to be really strong. <laughs> um, so here, uh, even if it doesn't manage to look very deep, it's probably going to find broader selection of moves uh, than most humans would find. So, if we're talking about real HS, then we need to add some additional spoof. Um, let's see. Attackers 2. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, we were in the method to determine whether it's checks or not. Um, This is where it could be kind of useful, as you're pointing out, to have a version of this method that determines... Um, well, I'm going to first do this um, one thing at a time. Maybe I don't need to make a special method, but if I end up duplicating code, then I'll create a new method. Uh, we'll deal with that problem. We'll burn that bridge once we get there, as they'll say. Um, so... Attackers to this square. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's actually tricky to define what pieces are attacking a given square, isn't it? Uh, so I kind of actually already need the specialized method just because 
from here I don't have visibility to the pieces that could potentially be the attackers. Um, so we're going to create a method, call it relay attackers too. But now that we're doing that, uh, it makes sense to break all this code out of here. So we're going to cut those five lines and drop them up here instead. And say else. Um, I'm not sure why I have these braces here. That seems to be overdoing it. Um, so we're going to need a method called relay attackers two um, that attacks the square of our king intersecting with the pieces that are not of the side to move. I suppose that'll be okay. It's going to be more expensive function than necessary because it's going to generate attackers too for both colors, but what can you do? Um, so if def relay and if um, I know I normally define the um, the variation form of the method. Well, I haven't always followed that convention. Um, I was going to say I normally define the variant version of a method after um, the corresponding normal chess definition, but here. Actually, there's really not much precedent, but here I'm trying to keep them separate. So I'm going to list the relay version first, um, just because all these things are bundled together. So attackers2 is defined down here. Um, and I'm going to say if, we're if we have an engine that plays relay chess, then we're going to need to define relay attackers too. Um, and I'm going to grab the move. I'm going to grab the code that's in the move generator, um, which is right here. I'm going to copy and paste this 335 through 327. here I might actually need to provide um, the color as an argument to this method also how does this file normally do indentation okay it does two for the first indentation then one two three four for the second uh, so we'll do it that way um, yeah, I think I actually need to pause here because, um, well, it gets messy if I don't do that. This gets really expensive and generates the wrong result if I don't specify which color pieces I'm looking for. Um, so, am I missing anything? Oh. There's this concept of target. Oh, we'll figure that out later. Um, oh, wait. So that thing, the move generator, specifies that we're looking for attackers. Um, I see. That looks for attackers to a given square. Um, I typoed. Um, typoed again. Let's replace that. And replace this. And replace this. And this. Um, and this is the wrong value to be returned. Do attackers to s um, 
by type, bit forward, all pieces. Um, whoa. Okay. Um, actually, that's completely off base. Um, this is also incorrect. Sound just got messed up again. Okay. Well, I think... Hmm. Yeah, I don't know what I can do about that. Sorry about that. Um, I do keep upgrading my version of the OBS Studio streaming software. Um, if there's some kind of bug with that, I'm not sure what I can do to fix it. Um, unless there's some sort of hardware issue, but I don't know what that could be. And, hmm. I guess all I can do is say either I'm sorry or if you've got some sort of advice as to how I can address it, I can look into that. I'm not sure myself how to go look into this sort of thing. Um, so the deal here, you'd have to list all the attackers to the squares that are attacked. If, yeah. Um, hmm. Not sure if the attack generation, well, yeah, I'm sure it's some sort of mix of the two that works ideally for whatever Stockfish's purposes are. Um, but yeah, it seems that, um, seems this is way more complicated than I initially estimated. Let's go back to what I was attempting earlier this morning. Um, so let's leave this relay attackers 2 thing behind for a moment and see if we can build up something that seems to make sense for a different case. Um, so I was initially thinking that this wasn't going to work, um, so I discarded this earlier, but. Um, let's take a look at this. Relay attacks from for all these types that aren't pawns. Um, so, let's see. Oh, again, I could copy and paste this code that I generated down here for 17 through... 409. Um, oh, but this needs to look at all the possible attackers. Um, that's the problem. Is that to determine even if a square is attacked uh, is tricky. Um, Right, attacks from a square. Hmm. <laughs> I think that first line's okay. So we're taking a look at whether a piece that's on a given square can attack um, in all various ways in which it does attack. Um. I think this is okay. So I'm going to say return B. Obviously this is flawed for the case where you're talking about pawn. Um, just not a case I had to handle in the other set of code. Um, so I'm going to need to add an additional check here. If, oh but I don't have access to the piece type. So does that mean I actually need to provide 
uh, a piece type as a template argument to the function. I might. Um, yeah, I actually do need that. Um, if piece type is equal to on, just return the default implementation. Return a text from square color. Um, but I'm not sure I need color here anymore, do I? Oh wait, yeah, I do. Yep, that's flawed. Uh, let me take a look back at the move generator and see what I copied. Um, so here, yeah, I think I had this right in the first place, um, and then I doubted myself. I just trust that the compiler can optimize this sort of thing, um, and I know it can, so there we go. It's important that we defend with our own color of pieces. Um, so that's going to be that. Um, we need to list the attackers to the squares that are attacked. Type of piece on square. Yeah, I could do it that way. Um, but um, there's no need for me to write all that because that could be subject to change over time. And because um, <coughs> there's already a version of this method where um, I'm pretty sure this gets called all the time which uh, interrogates the piece type and figures out what's attacked from that square. Um, let's see. That's also interesting. Template tax from pawn. Um, this is kind of suggesting to me that this method without the color is never used for, um, maybe I don't need that after all. Maybe as long as I'm overriding or providing my own version of this relay text from, um, uh, for, as long as I do it in a way that's consistent with this, it should be okay. Uh, yeah, these bit boards, I don't think the bit board itself is a problem. It's just the whole interface and figuring out how to use the code is tricky. Um, the bit boards themselves aren't that problematic. But figuring out all these methods that are all over the place um, and what they're uh, supposed to do is a bit tricky. Um, the difficult part isn't the fact that you're using a bitwise operator. The difficult part is making sure you're calling the correct method to do what you need to do. Um, and that's kind of always a challenge whenever you're coding something. Wherever you're creating something, rather. Um, so I think this is correct for relay attacks from... Um, I'm going to ditch this other method, relay attackers2, for a moment. Uh, can always come back and remake that if we need it. Uh, yeah, let me put this down here, I guess. Uh, template piece type text from const. That should probably be okay. Or maybe I just put it side by side with the corresponding method here. It gets ugly because when I start adding the other methods and have to interpolate them next to um, their other corresponding methods, but what can you know? Um, so 
And then if I'm going to be really consistent about this, I should grab this section of code uh, and drop it down here, just so it's in the same ordering as what's up above. Um, now, obviously, that doesn't serve the need that we need served, which is determining whether or not the player is in check or not there yet. Um, let's see, but what have I broken yet? Relay text from Square does not match any in... Um, what have I done wrong? Oh, is it just... Do I need a template type for this to work? Um, apparently so. Mm -hmm. Or I just need to say that, you know, I don't really care what the piece type is because that doesn't affect what I'm doing. No, that doesn't seem rational. Um, oh, here's where the template becomes important. when I say do it this way. Right, so like that's the deal. So we're determining what defends us and additionally what type of piece it is that we're attempting to move. And that's why we need piece type as part of that expression. Um, now, hopefully piece type's not a pawn. Um, I'm not sure if this attacks from a single argument if it accommodates a pawn. In fact, this can't possibly because it would need... Oh, okay. I get what that... I was following the commit history um, and the pull request history and so forth for the Stockfish engine. Uh, I now understand part of their motivation for their recent change. Um, this is a piece type. This is not a pawn. This is not a piece. It's a PT here. It's actually a piece type, not a piece. There is a difference between piece types and pieces, right? So you have piece types and we have pieces. Yeah, so here this does not differentiate between white pawn and black pawn. Um, therefore, um, it's a text from method that takes just a type of piece. Um, this method does not handle pawns because it does not know what color the pawn is. So this method is only used for determining attacks that are from pieces, um, non-pawns. So... I don't need to worry about handling the pawn case in the corresponding method because um, we're never going to pass a pawn's square into this method. You would never do that. Um, Alright, uh, let's try compiling again. <laughs> okay. B is undefined in the scope. Oh, all right. Um, I guess this is how we're doing it. I'm saying bit boy b is equal to just the default implementation, and then do something well, something something like that. Um, also, target is undefined in this method. There's no idea of applying a bit mask to what squares we're looking to go move to. Um, it's always up to the calling context to provide a target, I guess. I think this should be fine. So, what have I broken? 
now, or does it actually compile from, to, and C are not defined? Uh, the reason for those error me uh, messages being repeated multiple times is because um, it's because I've actually got up. Um, I've got my bash profile applying the um, job six flag, which says compile six files at once or queue up six things at a time here. Um, oh, wait, okay. I do have access to the side to move inside the uh, board object. Apparently I need it. Um, <laughs> this makes me think, this makes me rethink my approach. Yeah, no, I actually need, um, I'm going to need color C as an argument to this method. Um, well, unless I want to do something non-transparent, which I don't want to do. So let's actually reorder this and now stick that here. So um, but now it might be reasonable that a pawn get passed into this method. Um, so we're going to say if pt is equal to pawn um, return that. Um, else fall back and call all the normal stuff that we normally do. And that should be fine. Uh, of course, now I've changed the method signature. So let's reflect that up here. Uh, we're going to add color C to the method signature. Um, that should be fine. Okay, what's broken this time? <laughs> Things never work the first time. Thank you. Why we still haven't gotten to the whole thing about determining whether there's check or not. Uh, attackers to from. Oh, it's not called from here. It's called S in this scope. So when I copied from the move generator into the position class, um, I had a typo. Um, I mean, there's some logic to what you're suggesting, but there might not be a piece on that square. Um, if that ends up really being a problem, we'll change it. But I don't think, <clears throat> I don't expect that that's going to be a problem. Expect that wherever we're figuring out whether or not we can generate moves, we already have access to which players on move. And so there's no need to introspect the pieces on board to figure that out. Um, but yeah, I guess I see what you're saying is that, well, we're actually interested in what piece is doing the attacking. Hmm. It's not about the side to move, it's about what piece is on that square. Um, yeah. Okay, well, it's not going to perform well, but... I agree that correctness is more important here. Um, so, yeah, that's actually a way to go here. Um, so let's do it correctly, and then if we find opportunities to improve performance later, we can deal with that later. Uh, pieces of color of piece on square S. This goes back to our situation where we would not be calling this with a pawn. Um, but, you know, whatever. I guess I could leave that in there. Or better yet, rather than just getting rid of it. Um, oh, I don't know. I 
can always prune it later if I find it unnecessary. Um, so let me grab these lines, put them back below this method. Um, oh, now I actually have to do uh, color C is equal to that stuff. Let's actually type that out here. Color of piece on S. And then over here, we just need to say C. It's the color. You know, if I can like, type and not can we type those all over the place, that would be how we do it. Um, so that should be fine. Yeah, since that expression is used more than once, I'm going to actually define the variable, which allocates... Well, it's all going to get inlined anyhow, but could potentially allocate more memory on the stack if the compiler struggles with it. Um, let's see. That's going to compile. Are we going to compile this time? Okay. So at least we failed to compile in the one line where we would expect to fail. That's because I've not defined this method relay attackers to. I've only defined attacks, or is attacks from attackers from? I don't remember anymore. Um, but yeah, now that I've got this helper method to determine what's doing attacks from where, uh, yeah, now I need to figure out, um, how to define attackers to a given score. This is going to get messy. That's the method we need, right? A square and a bit board. Um, oh, just a square, in fact. I don't need to define bit board um, because we can look that up as we need it. Uh, this is going to get messy. Um, this is the method for which we're providing a custom implementation for relay chess. Def relay and if uh, over here, this is going to say relay attackers to a square. And this is where things get tricky. Um, so where's the other implementation, this two-argument version? Is that not defined in this .h file? Uh, because it simply is too challenging to be inlined. Um, yeah, yeah, the... Well, that's where things are going to get complex, for sure. Um, I guess I've got to read or implement um, custom versions of both of these things, which I can do. The journey of a thousand miles begins with a simple step. Really what helped me motivate me on actually starting any of this was the fact that we had a site for implementing the game. Um, so, yeah. I'm going to grab this. Have we 
got? Um, so the pawn attacks can stay as they are. Um, the rest of this is not going to be so straightforward. Um, so this generates all the knight, rook, bishop, and king moves. Um, but assuming that the pieces that are performing those attacks are in fact knights, rooks, bishops, and kings. Um, that's a fallacy. Um, so, bit board, knights equals zero. Actually, no, I don't need to say zero, because say it's equal to pieces, knight. And you can see, like, here's how we substitute um, knights for pieces knight, right? Um, how we're going to say knights is also going to include some sort of other thing. Um, and that other thing is going to be pieces which are attacked themselves by a knight. Um, so this is going to be um, relay. Wait, no, this is just going to be normal attacks from knight or square. Um, and pieces. Not including pawns. Not including pawns. How do you say pieces? I did actually define a bit more negation operator. Uh, so it should be possible to do this. Although I don't need to get fancy because uh, pieces pawn is always a subset of pieces. Um, so. I think that's what we're going to be considering to be the knights on a chessboard. Is any piece that's knight and oh, it's going to have to be of the same color as the. Uh, <laughs> that's the dilemma here. Um, hmm. Don't know how to avoid a loop unless the magic bit board stuff works on multiple source squares, which it most certainly doesn't. Um, we'll figure this out. We'll figure it out. Um, so here we are back at our method. We're going to say we've got a color. Um, First of all, is this even legal C++ code? Okay, that appears to be legal C++ code. Um, Oh wait, no, we're not looking for what's um, the color of the attacked square. We're looking for... <laughs> this is going to be funny. Um, so we actually don't have the color here. We're going to need to loop through all the colors, which is to say both colors. Um, so we can do that. 
Um, bit board nice. Um, actually, why don't I define a version of a method called like relay pieces? Um, that might be helpful. So this is wrong. Wrong, wrong, wrong. So let me go here and find pieces. So we've got all these pieces functions. Um, accept a piece type or multiple piece types. Let me first verify the multi piece type thing, or one of these delegates to the other, which I certainly hope that's the case. Um, by type bitboard. Okay. <laughs> okay, this is going to get really messy, but that's fine. Little mess has never stopped us until before now, so why should it stop us now? Um, so we're going to need to find some special relay pieces functions that do all this attacks from stuff, figure out what pieces. Um, Okay, so we're going to grab all six of these and wait, do some of these, well, yeah, here we go. It's possible some of this could be simplified later. Uh, I certainly hope so. Um, actually, relay pieces is pretty useless. Um, as is relay pieces color. We only really care about overriding these functions which um, have piece types supplied in their signatures. Um, so we're gonna look for pieces down here. And then after all of that magic, go down here. And if And grab this, drop it in here, and grab, what else, this here, also drop that down here, um, okie dokie. So, relay pieces is not going to define, it's not just going to do this, but it's going to do something more. Um, it's going to define by type, piece type. Why don't I first so confused over where I want to go with this. Well, we'll deal with one thing at a time. I'm going to say by type bitboard or um, pieces that are attacked by that type. So this is going to, in a sense, reform an additional step. Um, How do I even specify that? Um, <laughs> oh, it has to be attacked by the same color of piece. Okay, well that gets just confusing. Now, we're going to focus on just these last two for now. Uh, let me go back up here and say we're not going to handle the most generic case. Uh, so we're going to look for relay pieces. So this is the more specific case where we're saying we've got a color piece that we're looking for 
um, the type of piece and this also needs to include pieces that are attacked by that kind of piece um, I think that's what we're looking for. And I think that there's um, uh, I think there's a generic form of this method which says oh um, which says something like that. Okay. Actually, you need to be a multi step process here. Uh, at least for the two argument version of this, we have to first calculate that. Um, actually, so we're going to say bitboard b is equal to whatever this expression used to be equal to. Right? This is what this used to equal. And then we're going to say return by color uh, that and v or attacks from using piece type pt from origin square or squares i'm not sure how that all works that, that's where you're saying we might need the loop to iterate through all the origin squares um but let me check maybe we do have a version of that which takes a bit board um, I don't think that that's an automatic merge, by the way. Um, I'm pretty sure that that's all manually performed. So, yeah, you might need to create your own fork and keep it up to date if they fail to keep theirs up to date or something. I don't know. Um... Grab this, paste it here, and say that bitboard b is equal to this. Return that, and this, and that. Right, yeah. Obviously, we have to get this correct first. Um, So a text from except a piece and a square. And I'm trying to define it to do things with the bit board instead of square, and that's not gonna work. Um <laughs> Okay. Um Yeah, so it appears we might need a loop, like you were suggesting, that there's no way to do this in a single step. I would have imagined that with all the complexity I've thrown in there that we didn't need a loop, but apparently we do. Um, so let's see, do they have any kinds of loops here? Oh. None of the code inside this file uses a loop. That's uh, too bad. So, um,
Yeah, this is getting really complicated. Yeah, this is going to be really expensive. Well, so our steps that we need to do are first define where are all of our pieces. Second, define what pieces are attacked by our pieces. And third, define our piece moves from all that. Which seems to be a bit backward from how things are normally done. Um, which, maybe that's saying that we're doing things the wrong way. Um, so this is all so that we can determine whether or not a piece is in check. Like, you saw that I was able to do move generation. Move generation didn't have an issue with this. Um, the real problem is that the rest of the program tries to make sure that you're not moving into check, you're not um, putting yourself in check, etc. Uh, and that's kind of tricky. Um, so I think all these special rules we're defining have to do with check. That's the reason that we're doing any customization at all here. Um, and originally I was expecting that, oh yeah, we just follow the paradigm of what the engine normally does. Um, that doesn't seem to be working so well. The magic bit board to generate moves from multiple pieces, we could avoid a loop. Um, I mean, that's not the issue. Um, the move generation is not the issue. Like, this is what I was alluding to earlier, is that we've got move generation. And it does the move generation without, um, without looping. Uh, wait. Wait, this operates just for a single square. Um, wait, does it? Yeah. This does operate for a single square at a time, so this does perform a loop, in fact. Um, so for move generation, that requires a loop. Um, which is kind of encouraging. That's telling us... Things that were probably fine. <sighs> so, we're going to need a loop pretty much anywhere we determine this sort of stuff. Unless there's some way to cache F, well. We don't need to do move generation to determine what's being attacked. Move generation is actually more expensive than um, determining attacked squares. Because to generate moves, we have to determine whether or not said moves are legal. Or we could build up some constructs that allow us to determine that. Um, what we're trying to do now is determine what squares are attacked. Um, So, well, let me take another look at this, just try to think out of the box here. Um, I guess first of all, like maybe this doesn't need to do this for every piece type, maybe only the piece, well, We've already asserted that the piece type's not a pawn. And apparently this is never called it for the king, because um, so this assertion here, this override, is unnecessary. Um, this method only is called for non-king, non-pawn pieces. Um, So, 
But yeah, this does perform a loop through each one of our pieces and figure out what moves that particular piece has. If the magic bit board could generate what are all the attack squares for a bit board of or origin squares that have our pieces on them, that would be useful. Um, that would save us a loop in terms of figuring out what's attacked. Um, you know, this whole attacks from business. Um, well, even where do we get piece type inside all this? Oh, this is saying for a particular piece type, go ahead and determine moves. So that means, oh, in fact, yeah, I saw elsewhere in this the same move generator file that this does go one piece type at a time. Knight, King, Rook, Bishop, uh, Queen. Not in that order, but uh, for each piece type, it uh, then iterates through what are all the pieces of that type, etc. Um, and so there's no caching of a piece being of multiple types. And even if there were some caching, that cache would have to be continuously updated. Um, so yeah, I think the expensive part is that figuring out what are all the pieces that can move a certain way, which requires um, essentially that we're doing two levels of figuring out what's attacking what. I'm not being very clear here, but um, basically it has the same cost or close to it of generating moves in order to generate moves, um, which is pretty expensive. And like you're saying, there might be a way to cache that somehow and invalidate it for certain subsets of pieces under certain circumstances. And that gets really advanced and it's pretty brittle because as soon as the Stockfish authors change how their code works, that would need to be rewritten, which would be a problem. Um, so, but yeah, this sort of thing would need to be done practically all over the place, everywhere we're doing, like what's performing an attack, also what's attacking a square. Um, but without that, we can't get accurate evaluations. Uh, we can't get accurate, uh, is the player in check or not, um, determinations. can't figure out if the player is moving into or out of check, etc. Um, so yeah, we will, unless we want to incur some enormous performance cost and have to write lots of code, we're going to need to find some way to um, cache what's the set of pieces um, that can move in a given way. Uh, that will need to be cached and it'll need to be updated every time a move occurs. Um, wow. But yeah, without that, um, this is not going to perform. And it's going to require lots of code to continuously figure out what pieces move which ways or which pieces attack which ways. Um, so, well, yeah, I mean, relay chess is expensive. There's no question. Um, it's just why, like, I dragged my feet forever on it when Zug initially proposed the variant, and I said, yeah, that's great. Good to hear it. Um, and now that we actually have a site that plays the game, and I'm pretty surprised we do. Um, now I actually have some 
maybe just to say it might be worth trying to develop an engine for it because we if we can actually have the site that plays the legal moves um, surely it's possible to make an engine for it it's just challenging um, and expensive but whatever there's it's an unavoidable expense um, it, we've essentially doubled the cost of move generation um, but whatever we're gonna need to cash that somehow um, its status um, so I hate to do this but I'm doing it um, so we're gonna go back and take a look at our data structure now we've experimented with some code and floundered a bit and just really struggled um, also gonna get rid of that unnecessary assertion that I added earlier um, let's see did I fix this for the king moves yes I did um, so that's good uh, commit So I think that's fine so far. Um, let's look at our data structures. So do we have, what do we have just lying about for our convenience here? There's state info. Not copied when making a move will be recomputed anyhow um, so we have a bit board of pieces that are blocking attacks on the king we have I'm not sure what pinners for king is um, but we could potentially have versions of these sorts of things, blockers for and pinners for or whatever, something attackers for sort of thing that keep track of um, what pieces are attacked by what like colored and what opposite colored pieces. Hey Kaz, um, so I'm thinking if def relay um, I'm not sure. Something like this. Um, and this would need to have, let me see, where do we have color and be defined? Um, do we ever use color and be in piece and be on the same line code? Of course not. Oh, because we just call it piece NB. Okay. Because piece is the combination of piece type and color. Um, so I'm not sure what we're going to do there. Um, uh, oops, that's a typo. Obviously, that's not what we're going for. We're looking more like for attackers, defenders, something, but whatever. We're going to have to figure that out. Um, now, periodically, apparently my mic likes to be stupid. Um, I'm not sure what's going on with that. Uh, maybe I do need to get a new mic. Maybe this one just doesn't work anymore. So that's kind of a bummer. Um, if you want, I could try to shake it a bit or something and see if it changes how it works, but I don't know. Um, or I could look up the product online, I guess, and see like what I discover. Um, uh, forgot 
up. This is called forking like this. Okay, how do they do this stuff? Check squares, check squares, etc., etc. Side to move attackers. This will be restricted to the set of pieces that are not blockers for the king. Um, okay, so here we have find all attackers to the destination square with the moving piece removed but possibly an x-ray attacker added behind it. Um, that does not differentiate by piece type now, does it? Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on with the mic. I have had the opportunity to listen to some of my recordings and it does sound different. Um, I don't know whether that's an OBS thing, whether it's a microphone thing, whether it has to do with my internet connection. Maybe it has to do with your computer. I don't know. Probably not the latter. It's probably something on my machine, but I don't know. Destination square is defended, which makes things rather more difficult to compute, like this we proceed by building a swap list, etc, etc. Um, yeah, in all of this determination, it never considers what sorts of pieces are attacking, what sorts of pieces are defending. I was kind of hoping that there would be some kind of clue somewhere in existing code, so I didn't have to... Oh, there's this slider blockers method. I could look at that. Um, I think is actually to find a position at age. Oh, um, no, it's not. It's to find here somewhere. Returns a bit board of all pieces of both colors that are blocking attacks um, on the square as from sliders. A piece blocks a slider, removing that piece, etc., etc. Et so here's how they generate attacks for an array of pieces at once, or bit board of pieces. Um, they're saying while we have pieces, um, this actually is not accurate either, at least not for real HS, because snipers is not simli simply limited to um, rooks and queens that move like rooks. It could be also including kings that move like rooks and so forth. Um, this is why I'm saying like all over the code there's going to be need to be checks for are we real HS and if so use the cached information because checking just for queens and rooks is not going to cut it here. We need to check for relay pieces instead of checking for pieces. Um, so, um, so where's the definition of pieces? Oh, this is just a bit board, isn't it? what we were looking at not too long ago. Um, by type DB. Well, this is going to have to be updated continuously. Um, so let's see. Rep by type DB all over the code. Thankfully, it's only defined in a few places. Um, where is it updated? I'm not sure. Um, okay, where does this get updated? Gasling impeded. Tax from. Tax from. 
put piece. <laughs> That's not what we're looking for. Remove piece. Or actually, are these used during the move operation? If so, then maybe this is what we're looking for. Move piece. Okay. So, so yeah, this is the problem is that we need to keep track of an additional sort of set of information, which is not just by type bitboard, but some sort of by type relay bitboard thing. Or by type bitboard relay, um, which keeps track of what are all the pieces that have movement of a given sort. That's, oh my goodness, computing that is a nightmare when you consider all possible types of moves. Um, well, yeah, I'm not sure. So but when you consider that a move can move a piece pretty much anywhere, Yeah, doing this in a way that performs this. So the reason I wanted to do something that performs well so that I wouldn't have to write tons and tons and tons of code to make this work. Um, but apparently, like, I'm not seeing a simple way inside this move piece function to recompute what are all the piece movement types. Um, So, that's a thing. Yeah, I'm not sure what to do. It'd be nice if there were a bit board of pieces that were of given type, but I don't see a way to maintain that easily. As soon as you move a piece, that can expose attacks as well as um, create new attacks, as well as remove some sorts of attacks. Like if I move a knight off my back row, it could no it could be now exposing a discovered attack between the rook and the bishop. Also, the knight could have been defending some other sort of piece somewhere um, that no longer is able to move like a knight. And finally, uh, Knight could be uh, stepping into the way between two pieces. And obviously on a new square, the Knight could be defending other pieces that now move like Knights. So, yeah, statically determining all those things for every type of move. Not just for an ordinary move, but once you start including... Um, once you include uh, captures, once you include on passant captures, once you include uh, castling and promotion, it's going to get messy. So this is not something we can really statically determine. There's no way to um, there's no way to say that this cost only applies during the course of making a move. It's like every time we'd make a move, we would need to recompute this thing. Um, not just for the piece we moved, but pretty much for all the pieces anywhere in the vicinity. And there's no efficient way to do that. Um, so maybe it's not in the scope of these methods, but maybe elsewhere. <laughs> we're going to say we're going to calculate some additional attributes for the position that we're going to do uh, persist somehow inside the state of the object, I guess. Um, so, like some things that have been computed um, are just considering for a single king what pieces are blockers, what pieces are pinners. 
Um, but we would need to compute that not just for king, um, but for all piece types for all squares. Um, which is an expensive computation, but we could perform it. Is there any data structure here that um, uses square NB and piece NB in the same? Yeah, okay, here it is. Um, so there's precedent for doing something like that. So. So that's something we could compute and put into the state of a position each time we perform the move. Be not just blockers for a single king, but blockers for every type of piece and um, for every square on the board. But we're not so interested in blockers and pinners at this point. We're more interested in attackers and defenders. Um, um, that's also not what we're looking for, um, because each square has only one piece on it. Um, so we're actually looking for something more like this. And we don't actually care about attackers anyway. At least I don't. Um, so I'm thinking this is the data structure, the thing that we're gonna need to figure out and compute like once every single time we move, we're gonna have to recalculate that. And then we could use, um, oh, hang on. So I'm sorry, the square itself has only a single type of piece, but uh, we still need to do something like this, uh, say, for that particular square, what types of pieces are defending it. But that's, is that what we're looking for? That would at least save us the computation every time of figuring out, is there a bishop that's attacking this? Is there a queen that's attacking this or defending it? Um, so that would be the first thing we'd need to figure out, is what's defending that particular square um, of what type. So that, that would save us the calculation of what we've already computed elsewhere. Um, and I guess... Uh, Man, what a mess. So I get here where we're saying blockers for king. There's only one king, so color specifies um, all the squares and the bit board and everything. Uh, here are defenders for... Um, I mean, I could break this up into knight defenders for, bishop defenders for, and so forth, but I think this is fine. Um... I'm not sure what better to call that. That's an awful name. Um, but the analogous thing I think is called... Oh wait, no, there's a name for this sort of thing. Piece bit board somewhere. What is it called? called um, by 
type VB. Um, by relay type VB, I guess. Um, I don't know what to call this. But there's going to be a concept of um, what pieces, um, or where can we find pieces that are of a given type. And that's going to be a one-time calculation as well. And right, to actually compute that does require a loop, but this can be computed once and cached away. Every time we move, moving is pretty expensive too. So throwing this one time crazy expensive calculation, as long as it's a single time per move, it's not the worst thing in the world. Um, it's still a mess, but what can you do? Um, I'm just kind of drawing a blank. Maybe I should call this by type BB relay. I don't know. So, in case the Stockfish authors ever decide to do something clever, um, that this is not going to collide with their name convention. Hopefully. Um, do I need this Defenders 4 thing? If we somehow assume that I've correctly defined this by type BB relay thing, and it gets populated in the same way that this blockers for king and pinners for king get populated, um, let's see. then we're probably okay. We probably don't even need this Defenders 4. Um, although that could be used to generate this by type bit, bit, bit board relay thing. Maybe that's a two-step process. Um, one, generate um, uh, defended pieces Board. Wait, are these the same thing? Yeah, I've confused myself by injecting this um, square NB in there. I don't need 64 bit boards indicating stuff like that. This is actually the data structure that we need. This is what we've been saying the whole time, but I finally figured out where to put it in the code, um, as well as what to give it, I guess. Um, it's still expensive to compute this, but once we do compute it, I think we're set. Um, It's going to be expensive to compute. But hey, we're already generating what are all the pieces that block for attacks on the king? What are all the pieces that pin other pieces to the king? We already have some sense of being able to generate attacks um, for an array of bishops and for an array of uh, queens and for an array of rooks. We're able to compute that all at once for those entire sets of pieces. And so determining the types of pieces on squares is equally easy or difficult. Um, but yeah, if we have this, then that simplifies our move generator. Not that that even matters. Um, um, but yeah, let's say we grab this just for illustrative purposes. 
and go over to movegen.cpp. Um, here, instead of, well, no, a piece could be of multiple types here. Um, so, instead of what we're currently doing, it would need to be just if def relay, um, let's say, uh, if position is a relay chess position, um, uh, piece list is equal to squares uh, piece type of us. Um, and I'm not sure whether to prefix or suffix that method with relay. I think I've been suffixing everything with relay, so we just put it there, I think. And so the rest of this would just pretty much go down to like this. Uh, you wouldn't need any of that. And I guess that's that. Um, so that's what our new move generator would look like if we're able to figure out um, what squares were attacked by a relayed type of piece. Oh, well, I guess here it actually introspects what the piece type and so forth, but the fact that the square actually contains a knight and we're saying it contains a queen tricks the rest of this function. Um, like, it never interrogates what's the actual piece type that's on that square, I don't think. Um, so that's that for the move generator. Um, and that's the sort of paradigm we'd be following, I guess. method was that even calling? Oh, no, it takes a piece type and a color. Um, right? Okay, so this does take a piece type and color. That's cool. Um, so underlying data type for that. I mean, I thought I saw this here. Yeah, by type and by color. And this is just doing a bitwise and inside the definition. Return piece list. Oh, there's a thing called piece list. Where is that defined? That's up here. Yeah, you can have at most 16 pieces that move in a particular way. Um, I'm still going to put this in the state info because this is stateful information. Um, I don't think that would be something we could maintain the way that's currently maintained. Uh, which, yeah, right now, piece list is maintained inside move piece. It'd be crazy expensive to do. Well, I mean, it's going to be expensive one way or the other, but um, I'm putting this in state info. And maybe it's got to move back into position. I don't know, but I do not know. On the other hand, if I do move this back into position out of state info, um, then at least we know where we've got to define this. We've got to, well, yeah, we can focus on performance later, I guess. This is gonna suck. This is so gonna suck coding this, but whatever. We already knew that. 
Um, so every time we move a piece, we've got to recompute this stuff. Uh, if def relay and if, and if we're dealing with a relay chess position, do some additional stuff. Compute this thing. Um, but wait, is there an undo move? I think there is. That's what's frightening me here. Um, maybe I had that wrong. Maybe this is wrong. Um, let me put this back where it was. Sorry to keep vacillating back and forth. Um, what does undo move do? This is fine in position at CPP. Undo move takes, I think at the end of the undoing stuff, it replaces the state with the previous stateful information. I'm not seeing the stateful information here. Um, let's go to search.cpp and see what it does statefully. Apparently it relies on the position class to do anything stateful. Does it do something with state info? I could have sworn that this, yeah, state equals a state previous. So this has to do with any kind of complicated thing, restore the state. Uh, where can we change the castling squares? I'm not entirely sure. Um, That. Oh, I'm looking at position at cpp dot h. Yeah, we. This is actually going to be. Um, yeah, this is where this belongs. So castling rights are defined in state info here, um, and I think that each time a move is performed, um, it'll make some attempt to update the castling squares. Um, whenever a king or rook has been moved or captured. I'm not sure that that actually needs to change for relay chess. I'd be surprised if that changed. Um, but maybe it does. But yeah, this is definitely where this belongs here. Um, that, uh, this is some stateful information. Um, and yeah, I'm not seeing a better way to represent it. So the key here is that we're not going to maintain this each time we undo a move, just each time we do a move. And this means that um, in the same scope that blockers for king and pinners for king get updated, so do will this piece list get updated. Um, and let me just double check that the, the other, well no, I'm pretty sure the other thing was a, did have these same array dimensions, the piece list, uh, I think had array dimensions of piece and the at 16. Because you could have up to 16 pieces of any given type where that really becomes relevant. Oh, I think they just said we're not going to choose eight pieces because you could have nine queens or ten rooks. And so because of that, we're just going to put the limit at 16, which is a nice round number in binary. Um, we need to... Oh. Well, if you really, really need to do that, just put it in chess sign 60 mode. Um, let me show you here. So here we've got a flag UCI chess 960. Um, and you could say um, set option name UCI chess 
960 value true. And, uh, oops, I forgot to say position, start position to apply that. We see that here the castling squares are h1 and a1 rather than king, queen, king, queen. So just put it in 960 mode to do that. Um, and give it this start position or this FEN. Although I think you just say start POS, you'll know that, oh, by the way, this is 960. Um, so, yeah, whether or not it's 960 is independent of whether or not uh, the variant is set. So, if you want the castling intent to be uh, E1A1, E1A1, just do this. Internally, uh, Stockfish does represent castling moves as E1A1 and E1H1. It just doesn't always print them out that way. But if you're in 960 mode, it will print them out that way. Yeah. Functionally, it has no difference uh, inside the engine. Um, it's just in terms of how it interacts with the world outside the engine that um, having that set might be useful. So yeah, there's no harm in setting it. Um, so, yeah, we found that this is the data structure that we need to set. Um, obviously getting this uh, populated and maintaining it over time and all that's going to be expensive and challenging, but we came up with the right design, I think. Um, so that said, maybe I'll take some time, look into the mic thing, try to get that squared away. Maybe also I'll have some breakfast, um... So yeah, this has been a productive session. Yeah, much to the appearances to the contrary, we did learn some things, um, and so we have some better idea of how to proceed forward. And that's important. Uh, it's unfortunate that this is so challenging, but I kind of expected that from the outset, that this is not going to be simple. Um, so I might take a break here and come back and play some games, because, you know, it's the weekend. <laughs> I should try beating stockfish in the repo. Uh, I did pull down, yeah. Well, when I'm playing it in, when I pulled that down, um, uh, I managed to beat it at depth one. That wasn't too difficult. Um, but yeah, the, when you crank up its depth, it gets really difficult really quickly. Um, at depth one, it's pretty ignorant to the fact that it's trading pieces that shouldn't be traded. But yeah. Anyhow, we'll get this. Um, we'll get there over time. The engine will absolutely clobber everybody at first. Uh, it won't even be a contest. Which is part of the other reason I wasn't too interested first in doing this but you know there's demand for this we got to explore it and see like what's the right way can we learn anything from even trying to do this and now at least we have the right design in mind um, um, at least I think so so this returns the value of type square. I'm confused why the uh, why that's a square and not some other data type. Um, oh, I'm sorry. That's an array of pieces that are on squares. Yeah, it's up to sixteen squares. Um, 
that contain pieces. That's the deal. So, um, yeah, it indeed is not an array, but it's a list. Um, and you walk through that list, but it's still a useful thing to maintain. Um, yeah, this is the right data structure. Um, at least in terms of being able to walk through a list of pieces and figure out is anything, am I checking the opponent, am I in check, and so forth. Um, it might be useful to take this abstraction one level further and generate a bit board of all the pieces, but there's not a need for it, I don't think. Or at least this is the first step, is defining the list of all the pieces that are, are of all the squares that are for a given piece for a given color. Um, and so, like in our starting position, uh, we would have three queens, we would have four rooks, we would have three kings, and pretty much two of everything else, knights and bishops. Um, but, um, you know, having that would at least keep the cost down so you don't have to recompute that every time. And once we have this list, um, then maybe it also be useful to find a bit board that contains all the squares. Um, if there were such a bit board, it would be, I guess, I don't even know why you would want this, but bit board, um, I'm not sure what you'd name it, but it would be a, uh, that array dimension. Uh, I mean, I could take a look and see if there's anything analogous to this for just normal chess. You know, we have by type and by color. So if we really needed that, we could say by type bit board relay. And we could say by color bit board relay. But I think such things are unnecessary, but I don't know. Anywho, I, oops, this would now be piece type envy, this would be color envy as the dimensions. But, yeah, those would be potentially the three things to compute. This would be stateful information, and every time a move gets undone, um, this state would get restored. But, um, I think if you have the first, I'm not really seeing a need, not for this third one. Um... In fact, yeah, that has nothing to do with piece types, so we would never need that. But potentially this could maybe have some value. Um, so you could say, look for all the knights on the board. And it would return the four knights in the start position. You'd say, look for all the rooks on the board. And it would return all eight pieces that move like rooks. Um, So, yep, that's data design 101. Um, okay, well, let me at least save that. Let me make sure I haven't broken anything. Get status, get diff. Um, yeah, I'm not interested in committing move gen.cvp at this time. Um, uh, relay just work in progress. This seems ridiculous to commit, uh, but it is progress, and so I'm going to commit. Um, so yeah, every time a move occurs, not an undo of a move, but just a move, um, these would need to be recomputed. Um, note that we can't just incrementally change things, like each time a piece moves, you can't say, 
uh, this piece no longer moves like a rook, this piece no longer moves like a bishop. You can't do that here because actually calculating that involves looking at all the pieces on the entire board, looking at what attacks were uncovered and what attacks were now covered um, by the fact that a piece moved. Um, and just performing that inside move piece and remove piece and so forth would be crazy expensive. It's going to be expensive regardless. And maybe the implementation does go here. I don't know. Um, I mean, by all means, feel free. Try it out here. Let's see if move piece and remove piece and add piece and all that. If it's possible to implement the definitions here that um, populate these two data structures. But yeah, I'm thinking for sure this is going to be something that needs to be calculated every time a move occurs. Um, yeah, and then you could use these. Um, you could use this by type bitboard relay and piece list relay. Um, piece list relay I'm not sure what the use for that would be but this by type would allow you to check are there any pieces that move like a rook that attack in the direction of the king are there any pieces that move like a bishop that attack in the direction of the king and uh, so you could see like as a king in check if you had these defined um, you could figure out is the player and move on check or in check. Did they, did the player that moved just a second ago, did they move into check? Uh, if you had these, you could figure that out. Um, which is interesting. There are some fun positions where, um, let me just provide a simple example. Um, so I'm going to go to Leach's editor and clear the board. Just put something simple on the board. So we got a king, got a king, we've got a rook, and here we got a bishop, right? So black to move. We're going to say black is a move here. Um, so black obviously could take that. He could move his king out of the way. Or to get out of check, you could play bishop a3. Um, so, um, the idea of getting out of check is going to be a little bit more complicated these days. Um, um, Obviously, if there were some other piece here instead of a king, like say this were over here, and say we had a bishop here, and yeah, what the heck, we'll do it this way. Um, yeah, let's get this bishop off the board. So now our legal moves are knight, 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 and uh, the king over. So there's multiple ways uh, to get out of check and relay chess. That's for sure. Um, obviously, some of these will occur naturally to the engine, like the idea that, oh, this bishop isn't actually here. Maybe that's going to be part of the whole am I in check discovery stuff. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, figuring out if we're in check might take a form like this, in fact. Um, uh, I'm not sure if that works in the general case because there might be other pieces checking the king instead of a rook. You might have a knight checking and you can't like deflect a knight. But maybe for at least these um, long range attack sorts of checks, maybe this would be useful. Um, I think for king and knight, yeah, for checks that are close range this wouldn't work but um, maybe the answer I wonder so this kind of puts into perspective what we were just coding and just looking at 
that there might be a simpler solution than maintaining all that. Maybe the answer for all this check stuff is figure out, um, like, if we just imagine this position without the bishop on the board, if this bishop were just not here, all these moves would still be legal for black. Um, uh, how do I complicate this? Okay, let's replace this with the queen and put this king in the corner. I'm not sure, you wouldn't even be, you know, this could happen. This could happen. You could have your last move be queen a1. And now this is a double check. But we already in the engine keep track of f4 in double check. But we'd still have to figure out somehow that this is check as well as this. Um, so it's possible to get a double check going. Um, furthermore, if you've got a promotion, um, where you just did a promotion and now you've got a queen, this is a triple check. Um, not that that matters. Uh, it's probably the least of our concerns at the moment. But, um, I guess back to this, back to the simplest case. We would have to figure out that we're in double check. And Sockfish um, says that if we're in more than one check at a time, we have to move the king. Well, that's not true. That's no longer true, because we can deal with multiple checks at once by capturing the piece that's causing them all. Um, so, hmm. So yeah, maybe there is no simpler way than what we were already looking at. I'm not sure. In the general case, most of the time it's probably, yeah. Well, I'm just trying to think, do we even need, like, what's the benefit of having those data structures? Yes, those would suffice. Um, they would address the general case of pretty much everything. But we'd have to look at, um, why do we actually care what's attacking what? Um, why do we care that a square is attacked by a given piece? Um, I think the reason we care um, um, I think all this attacking stuff has mostly to do with um, trying to figure out if we're in check or not. Um, Because we saw that move generation is going to have some cost regardless. Um, and the fact that I've moved those two data attributes into state info um, so that they don't have to go into the move generator is going to save a little bit on move generation. But, um, well, is it? I'm trying to think that through. Yeah, I think it will. So the move generation is going to be fast, I think. And do we care about anything other than move generation? I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, I guess what this means is that um, when you're in a double check, you can't block both checks at the same time, but you can capture the piece that's causing all the checks. But I don't think there's a way to block two checks at once. Um, yeah, but why do we care about attack squares? Uh, I guess we do because we don't want to put our king into check. And we don't want to move our king through check. But looking for attacked squares really only applies to the king. We don't really care, in general, if we're moving the rest of our pieces into harm's way. Um, because um, the engine will perform a search, and it'll discover whether or not that piece is actually going to be captured, and if so, um, that problem kind of solves itself. 
there's as far as I know there's no evaluation well there is one thing where it does consider just a static evaluation uh, that should probably be turned off for relay chess because relay chess is too dynamic um, there is a static evaluation that tries to figure out which player stands better in a position and does perform some look ahead should probably be disabled for relay chess because that's just really horrifying. Oh, it's a static exchange evaluation. This stuff um, probably does not work right for relay chess and probably won't ever. Um, you want to take a look at how it's implemented. Uh, here we are. It's a static exchange evaluator. It attempts to estimate. The material gain or loss resulting from a move. Well, I guess at least it puts the the description of this says it tries to estimate. So these are just estimates. The fact that the estimate's going to be wrong almost all the time is probably okay. Um, as long as search engine doesn't or uh, doesn't rely too much on this. Um, but yeah, I think attacks are mostly, um, I mean, sure, static exchange evaluation looks at what are all the attackers from a square to a square, etc. Um, but we mostly care about attacks just in the context of not making illegal moves. Um, and in not causing all the built-in validations that can be enabled and disabled, but there's a lot of validations or assertions that go take place inside the engine uh, to try to just sanity check things. And so now that we've got a variant which in many means is not sane in the same sense, um, that's got to have to, we're going to have to make some changes to account for that. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, one. One consideration for why we've got to do this sort of stuff is because uh, we can't castle out of check. Um, it's kind of sad that castling is possible, but um, it makes relay chess more exciting. So that's going to cause some havoc in the engine, but what can you do? Um, I'm trying to think of what are other corner cases to consider. But I guess you get the idea. Um, but yeah, to get out of a check, a king will have to move to a square that's not attacked, or will have to perform a capture that resolves all the checks. Um, so we see here that this or, yeah, the king doesn't have to perform the capture, but something will have to capture the piece that's causing the mess. Um, separately, like, say we got this going on, where uh, white just promoted to a queen over here and happens to have some pieces lying around. Um, black can, in fact, get out of check. Yeah, it would involve taking the queen. Actually, this can't be a bishop. This would have to be a knight. This here could be a bishop. Um, so, that could be fixed by the king capturing the checking piece. Um, let's see, what else? What if I set up like a knight here, and we moved our bishop over here, and our king's there? We're in check. Um, this check can be resolved by king takes knight, um, which would get rid of the fact that the knight is causing the bishop to check the king. So, in a sense, I'm oh, sorry, let me color that red. So, in a sense, this is defending that. Um, but even though the square is attacked, the king can still go there. Um, so yeah, that sort of thing's going to be tricky. 
and really checking for attacked squares is most useful just having to do checks and with castling um, I don't think we do it for any other sort of piece obviously there's a static exchange evaluator which tries to do something but yeah that just dawned on me here too I was trying to set up an example um, you know that's a good question I guess Tab would have to answer that um, but yeah, this means um, that even attacked squares aren't useful in this context. Um, a square being attacked doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to continue to be attacked afterward. Now, if you throw another piece on the board, I'm not sure how you'd get into the situation in the first place. I guess you couldn't. No, you could previous move could be bishop c6, uh, causing a check that can't be resolved by capturing. Um, so you have to look at um, the piece that's performing the check and see um, is that piece that performed the check the piece that just moved? <laughs> um, and if that is the piece that just moved, um, then perhaps a capture uh, well, I don't know if it's not the piece that moved. If something else is causing check, then a capture can probably get us out of check, or at least in some cases it can. Um, but if uh, the piece giving the check is not the thing we're taking. In fact, yeah, in general, um, if the piece that um, just moved like say white has this and he just plays queen a1 the piece that just moved could be captured to resolve these checks in general is there a counter example um probably not <laughs> is there a case where a piece that just moved um could be causing a check however cannot be captured because there's some other piece giving a check um, that's complicated. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out just what are the rules for relay chess in terms of how an engine would handle it. Um, this is a mess. But you say it's impossible. You say that. I'm not so sure. Um, I think I have a counterexample. So here we are. So white plays rook g8. The rook is the piece that just moved, but capturing the rook does not get black out of check. Yeah. So, um, so how do you teach the engine to figure out what's check and what's not? I mean, simplify this a little bit. So that's check. Um, so this is check. There's all kinds of checks here. Um, could have this is check. I think the deal with figuring out the checks is going to be, I think where that gets complicated. Um, uh, let's go back to where we were earlier, where white just played queen to a1. Um, hmm, there's not an easy way to figure this out, is there? There's, um, So, technically, the bishop and the king are the two pieces giving check. Um, in fact, there's other ways that this could happen. Like, if this bishop were here, now the queen isn't even on the same line as the king, and yet both of these are giving check. 
Um, yeah. So I'm trying to figure out, is if a player's in check? Because there are three standard ways. I move the king, capture the checking piece, and block the check. Well, here, the checking piece is really kind of the queen here. It's not the bishop, it's not the king. The thing that's causing all the checks is the queen. Um, just kind of a nightmare. Um, another example that's even slightly more complicated. Uh, can I set this up legally? I think I can. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah, I was going to switch this and that. So, our last move was promoting to a rook check. Um, and I guess it's still a piece that just moved that's causing check. I was trying to think, is there some way I could throw a discovery into this mess? Yes, there is. So our last move... Well, I mean, it doesn't matter whether or not it's promotion at this point. That That's not relevant. There's no way I can, like, further increase the number of checks with the promotion. Um, I was going to say, like, maybe we have something like this where we... But whether or not that's a rook move or a promotion, we don't care. Um, yeah, um... You can't have a discovery because the relayed power would have previously given check. Yeah, I'm overcomplicating things. I'm trying to... I'm deliberately trying to find what are the corner cases here, as opposed to what's the methodological approach that we know is going to work. Um, anyway... Um, so this checking piece is... Yeah, Stockfish doesn't do it that way. It could. It'd be kind of a massive change to change how Stockfish looks at this, but that could be done. Um... That might be necessary, though, because, yeah, I think this is the thing that Stockfish tries to avoid by doing all sorts of clever things, but it might be necessary to override all the cleverness and say, um, you know, this is just how we're going to do it. Um, it's not hard, it's just, well, it's... I mean, yeah, it's inefficient, but also changing Stockfish to be able to look at things in that way when it's traditionally looked at things in a very different way involves changing hundreds of lines of code, but there's no avoiding it. Um, I might be overestimating that a bit, but uh, I think that's necessary. I think you do have to go the additional move ahead that there is no generic way to handle this. Um, or at least maybe there are some ways to generically attempt to handle it that probably work in most cases, but in other cases you still need to do it uh, the way you're suggesting. Um, no, I think that was my original idea, in fact, was um, just do the one move look ahead. Um, you think there is a way to just generically determine capture, block, or uh, move? Um, yeah, I'm not so convinced. Okay.
And we're always going to have to be able to fall back to the method Zug was describing. And here's the reason why we have to fall back. You're going to like this. Okay. Black moves F... Oops, I have this backward. Um, Black's in check. No, he's not. I lied. Um, Black's in check. White plays e5 to get out of check, right? White takes en passant. Black is now in check again. So we're still in this crazy, stupid en passant use case. Going to need to have some kind of way to figure that out. This has been a mess for the bit for or for the stuckfish authors. It's tricked them once or twice. They finally set up a good test for that. Um, Okay, so what's our idea? Just treat all pieces as knight queens. Yeah. And then see if we've got a hypothetical check. And if so, then do some more investigation and stuff. Not bad idea. Not a bad idea. Um, oh, and then see if there's something actually powering that hypothetical checker. Uh, interesting. Interesting. Um. So, I mean, that could be done to at least determine whether we're in check or not. To determine how we actually get out of check is going to be another matter. Um, but that would work for at least determining is the player in check. That would be sufficient. That's probably going to be the way it needs to be done. Um, um, I'm trying to think. There might... Yeah, that would be sufficient. I'm trying to reflect over what was coded earlier this morning. Let's see. Um, I was suggesting that up front, um, we're going to generate a list of attackers uh, that move the way the various pieces move. Um, which would be another way to handle it, is first verify how each piece moves, and then second, figure out if there's a check. Um, and the benefit there is if you know how each, each piece moves, um, then you can know uh, what pieces you can use to block the checks. Um, but yeah, you could... Um, it's probably six one way, a half dozen the other. Um, Either way, there's going to be need to be some kind of loops or something. I don't know. It's crazy stuff. But yeah, this en passant trick, um, whereby there's two discoveries made at once, has on occasion confused the stockfish authors. Just amazing. Um, now, obviously, they're looking at it in a different position. Um, they, they got confused just by the lateral check itself. Uh, <laughs> okay. But yeah, Zug's way of approaching that would work. I think the way I suggested this morning also would work. I'm not sure which one's better. Um, obviously the way Zug suggests is pretty simple. Um, in terms of coding effort, I'm not sure whether it would be more code or less code to do it one way or the other. Um, and I'm not sure which would perform better either, but um, yeah, certainly that's a way, and it's good to have that. But yeah, figuring out whether a player can exit check is kind of crazy. Um... Yeah, 
I can't complicate this any further here. Um, I'll say the other day I was playing against uh, a engine that just looked one half move ahead and trying to checkmate the damn thing was the most tricky thing because it left both of its rooks in the corner and so like it would just dump its king from b8 to d8 back and forth and the c8 and e8 and all that whenever I tried to approach the king. Um, it was really fixated on the eighth rank for some reason. I don't know why, but um, yeah, checkmating in this variant against a king that's well defended is pretty tricky. And it's not like the engine was even doing look ahead. <laughs> it was just crazy. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to now put this logic into stockfish, and it's it's just an endeavor. It takes effort, it takes time. What doesn't? Um, but yeah, I think um, that's about as complicated as it's going to get. And the rest is just writing the code and verifying it's all correct. Um, um, let's see, what was it that I sworn I was coding something lately. In any event, um, I do hope to take a break today from coding and do return to this at some point. Um, it's great to have these visuals. Oh yeah, the other day I fixed the bug whereby I had position like, uh, what was it? Um, I had a position that was something like this, and black played knight takes knight. And this is in the JavaScript chess engine. Um, I think. No, this is Stockfish. This is my initial try in Stockfish. I got it wrong because um, I had it incorrectly detecting what's protecting what. Um, but that's been fixed. Anywho, I got that fixed yesterday, and. Um, Part of this morning just found a more optimal way to do that, but, um, but yeah, I think I've done enough data design and coding for this weekend, and we'll come back to it at some later point. I'm sure there's plenty of interest in getting this engine going, and I do apologize for the delays therein, but whatever. Um, so... Yeah, I guess thanks for watching, um, and I'll see you when we do play some games or whatever we end up doing next. So see you then.